I hope you have your Bible and your highlighter. I have mine, but it's on the shelf behind me because I'm going to be showing you six Bibles that I think every Catholic should own and have on your bookshelf, including the one that I use for Bible highlighting. I was thinking, you know, having a program called Catholic Bible Highlights needs an episode called Highlighting Catholic Bibles. Get it? Well, that's what I'm going to do in this episode. I'm going to highlight six Catholic Bibles, different kinds of Bibles, that I think every Catholic should have in their possession, on their bookshelf, and using regularly for different kinds of Bible study and biblical engagement. And I want to share all of those with you today. Before we go any further, though, please click the like button now. It's helping my channel. And thanks to all of you who have been clicking like when you watch these videos. It doesn't cost anything. We won't call your house and ask you for anything. It just helps drive the visibility of this channel. And thanks to all of those who are subscribing. Since I started this series, this channel has grown by almost 2,000 new subscribers. Thanks to all of you. And several of you have become supporters of this channel. So I've left four ways that you can support this channel in the description of every video in this series. So if you would like to become a supporter of the channel, drop down there and check it out. Okay, why are we doing an episode highlighting six different Catholic Bibles? Don't I just need one Bible? Well, if you're like me, you need lots and lots and lots of Bibles and you get in trouble with your wife uh, for buying more Bibles. But, you know, it's God's word, so what can she say? I spend a lot of money on Bibles. I always have. I love collecting them. When I became a Catholic and I went to the USCCB, the, the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops uh, website, to find out all the Bibles that are approved for Catholic use for devotion and prayer and worship, I bought them all. And there are so many different versions uh, of great Catholic Bibles out there. I just think every Catholic should have several. I want to highlight the six I think should be in your possession in this episode. Now, at the end of the episode, I'm going to give you three verses to highlight about Bible study. A few years ago, while I was on my journey into the Catholic Church, I worked with a woman who was a lifelong Catholic. And I had just gotten this brand new Bible. It was given to me. I'm going to introduce it to you here in a minute. It was given to me in RCIA, and I was so excited about it, and I asked her at work, do you have a Bible? And here's what she said. I think I do have a Bible. Yeah. No, yeah, I have a Bible. I have a Bible. And as a guy who had been a Christian since I was 16 year, years old, who had been the pastor of a church, I want to tell you, it was the most shocking thing in the world for me to hear a Catholic woman have to think a minute about whether or not she had a Bible. Now, I know most of you who are watching this program have Bibles. You're learning to mark them up. You study them. They are a companion uh, of yours on your spiritual journey. But we've got to get past this thing where Catholics don't know where the Bi their Bibles are, and they don't know what's in their Bibles, and they don't know how to talk about their Bibles, which kind of leads to the next thing I want to share, and that is if you are a Catholic, who, who knows your way around scripture, first you can draw closer to the Lord because you'll have more of his word in you. Remember what St. Jerome says, as quoted in the Catechism, ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. And so we need to have God's word in us so we can continue to draw close to the Lord. But the other issue is, as someone who pastored non-Catholic Christians for 20 years, I want to tell you how important the Bible is to Protestant and Evangelical Christians. They carry their Bibles around with them. They go to Bible studies. They read scripture daily. It's almost impossible to find uh, a Protestant Evangelical person show up to church without a Bible under their arm, with it open on their lap during the sermon, taking notes, marking it up during devotions. And so if you as a Catholic want to have conversations with fellow Christians who are not in full communion with the Catholic Church, and you want to discuss their objections or their issues with Catholicism, and you don't know your way around the Bible, it will be difficult for you to be a bridge builder in the healing of what the Catechism calls these wounds of separation that exist between us as Christians. 
and you can inspire the confidence of your non-Catholic Christian friend when you are talking to them about your faith and you're able to help them see that the Catholic faith is biblical. And so I want to try to just give you the resources that have been helpful to me over the years and suggest that you have a shelf full of Bibles of different kinds that you're using. So with that in mind, let's talk about the first Bible that I want to share with you today. It's the Bible that uh, I've been using on this program. And by the way, all of the Bibles that I'll show you are uh, links to them are in the description of the video. But this is the New Revised Standard Version Catholic Edition Note Takers Bible. Now, the link that I'm providing you in the description will take you to an entire page of note takers Bibles that are Catholic, faithfully Catholic Bibles uh, from different publishers, different designs and so forth. But the one that I use in these episodes every time I get with you uh, here on this program is the New Revised Standard Version Catholic Edition Note Takers Bible. What's this Bible for? You know, as you look at this Bible on your shelf, your collect, your growing collection of Bibles, why do you reach for this Bible? Well, I want to suggest that this is your bridge building Bible. Remember what I said just before introducing this one. You want to be able to have conversations with people about the Bible who love the Bible, but maybe who don't understand how biblical Catholicism really is. And so when you know that you're going to be in a conversation with someone and you're going to be sharing with them about your Catholic faith or you're at work or, you know, you're, you're with family members and they have questions about the Catholic faith, this is the Bible that you reach for as you learn to annotate it and cross-reference it and take your notes in it. This is your Bridge Builders Bible. It's the Bible that you take down when you want to have these conversations because you'll be so familiar with it. You'll have found your way around. It'll have all your questions and all of your discussion points in it that you want to share with your friend. This one has just a very brief introduction to each book of the Bible. It's got a few cross-references, some brief notes. It's got very wide margins in it, and that's the big key. You want lots of room to take notes, and it's got great paper, and the text is uh, uh, wide enough and far enough apart that you can circle and underline it, and it looks great as a highlighted uh, cross-referenced Bible. Now there's no concordance, there's no commentary, there's no glossary, there's no topical index. Uh, it's a Bible with the Bible in it. That's what this is and a few little cross-references to help you. So if you don't have a note-taker's wide margin Bible and you're gonna do Catholic Bible highlights, you gotta have this in your collection or one like it. Check all the ones out and get the one that you like the best. The next Bible I want to show you is the Bible that I have open on my lap every single morning. I say that with an asterisk. Sometimes I don't do this, but just about every single morning. My wife and I get up very early. My son gets up to go to work. He leaves just before 6 a.m. I go in the corner where my chair is. My wife sits on the sofa in front of me and we go through book by book by book through the Bible and we do this over and over and over again and we have been for years. We read the Bible every day. Uh, we listen to it out loud and follow along or we read back and forth to each other. As I'm recording this video now, we're going through the book of Jeremiah and this is the Bible that I have open in front of me. It's the Revised Standard Version, Second Catholic Edition, Holy Bible, published by Ignatius Press. I would call this my devotional and prayer Bible. It's the Bible that I have with me when I'm spending time with the Lord and when I'm spending time with my wife in daily devotions, as we would call it. Bible reading, scripture reading. I love this Bible because on the front of it, it has the, the artwork is called the Four Evangelist. This is known as the Tetramorphic Gospel or the Gospel in four forms, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, Matthew being the man, Mark being the lion, Luke being the ox, and John being the eagle. And there's Jesus right in the middle, Jesus the great teacher, the word incarnate. And this Bible is the one that I sit with every morning to read. So I don't, I, though I do mark up this Bible, 
it's not really for apologetics or bridge building. It's more like I underline things in there that speak to me. For instance, you might remember the episode that I did called A Bible Full of Crucifixes. I started doing this after I became Catholic if I saw a crucifixion scene in the Bible or the word crucified, I would draw a crucifix in the margin of my Bible. Or if I see references to the Eucharist, I draw, I draw a cup and, uh, and the uh, Eucharist bread. I draw that in the margin of my Bible. I make all kinds of notes about how God's Word is speaking to me as I'm praying and listening and studying. I'm not necessarily writing things that I want to share in my bridge building uh, or evangelization or witnessing conversations. It's more like, wow, the Lord really spoke to me about this in this verse. For instance, I read in uh, Jeremiah, I believe is at the end of chapter 30, when, he's, when God says, at some point you'll understand what I'm doing uh, by judging you and disciplining you. And so I wrote, you'll know, you'll understand when you're older. I wrote that in the margin of my Bible because this is how something, this is something that the Lord spoke to me as I was reading my devotional Bible. There are some cross-references in this Bible, some basic notes about language and places, definitions of terms, or when the text is ambiguous, it lets you know that there are lots of options for how a word or phrase could have been translated. There are no commentaries, no introductions. There are very narrow margins, so not a lot of room for notes, and there are a few blank pages. But generally, you need, and this is why I'm uh, highlighting this Bible, you need a Bible that you can have on your lap when you are spending time in prayer and Bible reading yourself or with a group of people that you're just getting together, together to pray with. When I go to our Men of St. Joseph men's group on Thursday nights, this is the Bible that I take with me because we do Lectio Divina, Divine Scripture Reading, and this is the Bible I have open in front of me for that. So get yourself a devotional Bible. The third Bible you should have on your, sh your shelf Every Catholic should own this Bible. This is the Didache Bible. Uh, it's a study Bible. The next three Bibles, this one and the two after it, are all three study Bibles. So the Didache Study Bible, again, is the Revised Standard Version, Catholic Edition, which means it has it's a Bible with the whole Bible in it. Um, it has commentaries in it based on the Catechism of the Catholic Church, introductions to each book's, uh, dozens and dozens of apologetics inserts. Because This is one of those Bibles that you can study, but you can also use this one while you're marking up your own Bible or even to mark up your own Bible for th themes that you think will come up over and over again. You're probably going to find one of those themes in the index of apologetics articles in the back of this book. And these are terrific. There are dozens of them, over a hundred apologetics articles. So if your friend says, well, what's this with purgatory or this, this whole Pope thing or indulgences or going to a priest for, for a confession or uh, what do you mean transubstantiation? Well, chances are whatever the question is, there's going to be a brief article about this in the Didache Bible. And so you should have it on your shelf. It's a great Bible, f not only for bridge building, but for just studying and getting to know what the Catholic position is on the meaning of certain biblical texts, and also tons of references to the Catechism of the Catholic Church. It's the most cross-referenced Bible for uh, references to the Catechism that'll be on your shelf. So get this book. Excellent maps in the back of it. Uh, if you're into that kind of thing, I do look at maps when I read certain books. I, uh, it being kind of down inside the world of the Bible is very important to me. Where did this happen? And so if you like that, then there's good maps in there. It's very sturdy. It'll take a beating. Uh, and there's lots of blank pages in there if you want to create little indexes of your own. So get yourself a Didache Bible and uh, make sure you, you reference that. If nothing else, you know, uh, every couple of days, read one of the apologetics articles that, that's in there and then try after you've read it, to kind of repeat back to yourself the big ideas in that article. All right, here's the next Bible of the six. It's the Ignatius Catholic Study Bible. Now, for the longest time, this was just the New Testament, but in, uh, in the uh, autumn of this year, I believe, to 2024, 
the entire Old and New Testament is going to be available and in print. I've already pre-ordered my copy, but since I became a Catholic, I bought this one and I've had it on my shelf and I use it regularly when studying the New Testament, which happens to be my passion and my discipline. And so when I study the New Testament, it's not unusual for me to pull this Bible off the shelf. I think this, in terms of just what it has in it, in terms of notes and resources and scholarly work and history and the Catechism and the Fathers, and I could go on and on and on, I don't think that there is a study Bible on any shelf anywhere that can compete with this one. And I mean across the board, Catholic and non-Catholic Bibles. So this is uh, the Cadillac of study Bibles. And if you can get your hands on the Old and New Testament together, you should do it. Or if you just want to start with the New Testament, you can get that one too. It's got commentaries in it again, based on the Catechism of the Catholic Church. It's got introductions to each book. It's got word studies, cultural and linguistic resources, historical insights from across the centuries from the apostles, from the early church fathers, from uh, ancient and medieval uh, biblical thinkers, and from modern commentators and scholars as well. Outlines on every book of the Bible, essays on biblical themes and uniquely Catholic things that people have questions about. So you just got to have an Ignatius Catholic study Bible on your shelf, but be sure you take it off your shelf and read it and study it as well and use it in your Bible studies. This is the Catholic study Bible. There is none better in my opinion. But I am going to suggest one more study Bible. So you'll have three study Bibles on your shelf if you get all these. The last one, of course, is probably the most popular Catholic study Bible in the world. And that's the Great Adventure uh, Catholic study Bible. Why is it so uh, popular, you might ask? You probably won't ask because you already know. It's the Bible that's used by Father Mike Schmitz in the daily podcast, The Bible in a Year the most popular Bible study on planet Earth being done by a Catholic priest reading this very Bible and using the insights from this Bible to guide those who read it through the whole story of Scripture. And that's why it's called the Great Adventure uh, Study Bible, because it takes you through this great, magnificent, epic story of Scripture from Genesis to Revelation using uh, Jeff Caven's famous Bible timeline method for working through the big uh, um, timeline of the Bible. So you've got to have this if, if you're reading through the Bible. Like if you're going to go through the entire Bible in a year, then this Bible really you should have. In fact, I would even say if you do the Bible in a year podcast, which I encourage everybody to do, let this be the Bible that's open on your lap. Let this be the Bible that you underline and have your journal next to you or your notebook next to you that you're taking notes or use their notebooks and, and their, and their um, uh, note-taking booklets that they've developed. But get this Bible and have it and go through the podcast and learn the Bible. Read the whole thing. You only got one life. You might as well use it to read and study God's Word and get to know the Lord better in the pages of Scripture. And this is a great Bible for doing that along with Father Mike and Jeff Cavins and the whole team that's put this together. Uh, it is a full-color Catholic Bible. It's beautiful. It's got maps. It's got charts, if you're into that kind of thing. It's got great uh, studies in it from, from front to back, and you should have a copy of this on your shelf, but off your shelf when you're listening to the podcast and studying the Bible. And then the last Bible that I want to share with you is the first Catholic Bible I ever owned. This Bible, we, our parish here in Virginia Beach has given out, I think it's got to be thousands of copies of this Bible. If you come to our parish and you go through RCIA, uh, faith formation classes, if you are part of our church's evangelization uh, Bible studies, all this, this stuff that we're doing to train people in God's Word, you will often be given a free copy of this Bible. Our uh, annual men's and women's retreats, everyone that comes to that who's never been before, gets a free copy of this Bible purchased by people in the parish. My wife and I have bought cases of this Bible 
and delivered it to our parish to be given away to people that come to our events because it's a great Bible. And here's the big idea behind this one. It's put out by Catholic Answers. It's the New American Bible Revised Edition. That's the translation that's read in every parish church in the United States uh, for Mass. It's the, it's the biblical translation used in the liturgy in the U.S. And of course, so then it has all of the study notes that have been put in there by that translation committee, by the New American Bible Revised Edition folks. All their study notes and introductions and commentaries and perspectives are in that Bible. But Catholic Answers got a hold of this and they inserted over 80, I think it's 80 plus, I can't remember, 80 plus articles on different apologetics questions that often come up in their work, Catholic Answers. This is a great Bible to begin using to annotate your own Bible. This, remember the one that you're marking up. You could use this Bible to create your own annotations in your Bridge Builders Bible. Um, because uh, topics like purgatory, the Pope, uh, the, the um, dogmas regarding Mary, her perpetual virginity, etc. There's articles about every single one of these questions and the answers that we as Catholics would give when we're talking to somebody. And these articles are just dripping with biblical references, dozens of biblical references about every single one of these 80 plus subjects and references to the catechism. So you can see a theme here, Didache uh, Study Bible, the New Catholic uh, Answers Study Bible, the uh, Ignatius Catholic Study Bible, the catechism is a feature in all three of those Bibles, as well as lots of cross references about how to find your way around the Bible. If you're gonna be talking to non-Catholic Christians about your faith and you want to get a really quick uh, summary of how to talk about different subjects and you want to annotate those in your own Bible maybe and, and take little notes and questions and, and, and guiding little points of dialogue that you might mark up, this Bible can provide you with the resources that you need to do that in your Bridge Builders Bible or it could be your Bridge Builders Bible. It's up to you but you should definitely have it on your shelf. And then when someone says, well, what, why do you pray to the saints? <laughs> then you can say, okay, here we go. And you can pull this Bible down off your shelf and say, let's get together and talk about it. And then you annotate your Bible, you highlight your Bible, you read this article, you, you coach yourself through the discussion, and then you go and talk to your friend about it. And this Bible will help you with all of that. Another feature of this Bible is that in the back, it has all the daily readings and Sunday Mass readings. Why? Well, because it's the New American Bible Revised Edition, and that's the Bible that's read at Mass, and so there's some telegraphing going on with this Bible. The telegraphing is this. You might want to take this Bible to Mass with you. You know how Catholics kind of get elbowed and ribbed by our non-Catholic friends because we don't take our Bibles to church? Well, the idea here is if you want to start taking your Bible to church, and you can read the texts that are read in the Sunday Mass or the weekday Mass, there's a guide for where you're at. Well, what are we reading today in the Mass? That's in the back, as well as a liturgical guide to guide you through all the uh, parts of the liturgy. That's in the back of this one as well. So those are the six Bibles I want to highlight in this episode of Catholic Bible Highlights. Get it? Before we hang up, though, I got to give you three verses because we can't have an episode of Bible Highlights without highlighting our Bibles. So let's do three verses about Bible study, okay? These, these are three really important verses to me. I've treasured them for years. There, we could do 10 or 20 verses, but I just want to share three with you that are meaning, uh, meaningful. And um, so this is the biblical theme of Bible study. And here's the first one that you can highlight. It's 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. And in this text, uh, the Apostle Paul is telling Timothy, who's the bishop of Ephesus, that one of his jobs is to teach doctrine to the church and to correct false doctrine. And as those who participate in the apostolate of the Catholic Church, which is the ministry of evangelization and 
bringing everybody to Christ and into his bride, the Catholic Church, we have to participate in that communication of good and solid teaching to the world. And so when we hear how Paul is talking to Timothy in this text, we can kind of say, you know what, I need to participate in this too. I need, I need to join in here with what Paul is telling Bishop Timothy, the bishop of, should we say the bishop of the diocese of Ephesus or the city of Ephesus? And here's what he says. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. Some translations say rightly dividing. The idea there is you've done uh, Bishop Timothy, you've done your Bible study, you know the faith, now be diligent to, to study it and understand it in the best way that you possibly can so that you can teach people the truth and not be ashamed. Not be ashamed. Notice that? Who has no need to be ashamed. And how many times as Catholic followers of Jesus have we found ourselves in a conversation red-faced and ashamed and embarrassed because we, I just don't know how to talk to people about this stuff. Well, in that case, this is a verse for you. It's God's word to you saying, you too, you be diligent. Get yourself a good study Bible. Listen to podcasts and YouTube videos. Underline and highlight and meditate on scripture. And don't be afraid to get in conversations with people. And don't be afraid to tell them, I don't exactly know how to answer that, but I know there's an answer and I want to keep talking with you. Can we talk about this again when I've had a little more time? That's called being diligent, doing your best, as it says, to present yourself to God as a worker approved by him who has no need to be ashamed. And so it takes time to, to get um, confident and fluent with talking about biblical themes, but you can do it, and the scripture encourages you to do it, as Paul encourages Timothy to do it there in Ephesus, where he's the bishop of all of the Christians in that city. All right, second verse. Uh, I would love it if you would just memorize this one. It's Psalm chapter 119, verse 105, and here's what it says. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Well, what's that about? That's not just about me having conversations with other people and teaching them. That's about me having God's word in my head and in my heart so that, you know, what's, a, what's a, a, a lamp to your feet and a light to my path? That's so you won't walk through this world in darkness. That's so you'll know which way to go because God's word is in you. It's in your mind. It's in your heart. It's driving you along. It's showing you which way to go. It's telling you, nope, not there. Remember, God's word says not that. His word says this. And so as you have scripture in your heart and in your mind and you're meditating and it's shaping the way you think, then it becomes a light to your path. It becomes a, a, a guide to you to keep you on the path of, of God's will and off the path that leads away from him. So meditate on and memorize Psalm 119, 105. It's another verse about why we should study scripture. Now here is what I would call my life verse. Do you have a life verse? I encourage you to get yourself a life verse. It's a it's a biblical verse that really speaks to you and it's it kind of drives you. It becomes a driving force of your life. Years and years ago, I read this text of the Bible and I underlined it and it just became a driving force for me. It became a great source of uh, energy in my life. The kind a kind of a why I do what I do and how I want to live my life. And it's Ezra chapter 7, verse 10 in the Old Testament. Ezra, along with Nehemiah, is leading the exiles back after captivity into Israel and rebuilding them, not only uh, the structures of the city, but the structures of their faith, their very hearts and their very lives. And much of that, as you read Ezra and Nehemiah, involves bringing people out publicly. You can read all about this in Nehemiah chapter 8. Bringing them out publicly and reading scripture to them for hours at a time. And Ezra is part of that, of retraining the people of God to be the people of God in terms of being aligned in their, in their minds and in their actions and in their lives 
with his word. And so here is his charter, Ezra's charter, <laughs> Ezra's um, credo. And here it is, Ezra 7, verse 10. For Ezra had set his heart to study the law of the Lord. That sounds great. Bible study, doesn't it? Listen to the next thing. And to do it. Ever heard practice what you preach? Well, Ezra was practice what you study first. Let him absorb the world word and apply it to his own life. And then number three, and to teach the statutes and the ordinances in Israel. And that really spoke to me years and years ago. Kenny, you need to study God's word, but be careful. Be careful. The book of James says, if you look into the law uh, of God's word and you don't do what it says, you're like a man who looks in a mirror, then turns around and forgets what he looks like. So you do need to study the word of God, but then you need to do it. <laughs> do it. Study it. Do it. Teach it. That's the outline in Ezra chapter 7 verse 10. And that's an outline for you and for me. All right, I'm going to get my Catholic Bibles. I'm going to commit myself to studying the Bible and getting to know it better. I'm going to become an obedient child of God. When I learn something that the Bible tells me I'm responsible for, I'm going to do it. I'm going to live in obedience to God because I love him and his word tells me how to live. And so I'm going to study it and I'm going to do it. But number three, I'm going to teach it. I'm going to say, Lord, if someone comes across my path today and needs some encouragement from your word, Ezra 7.10 says, if I study it and do it, then I'm also responsible to teach it to others who might need to know something that you've taught me. And how about we end this episode by thinking about these three texts as a prayer that you could pray to God. You could maybe write these three uh, texts of scripture in the front of your devotional Bible and open it in the morning, and you could say something like, and I'll pray now as we end the episode, Lord, help me to do my best to present myself to you, one who is approved by you, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, who can rightly explain the word of truth. May your word be a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Help me now as I set my heart to study your word, Give me the strength of your Holy Spirit to obey it and help me to have the words to say in case someone comes across my path so that I could teach it and share it with them. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Hey, thanks for joining me. Like, subscribe, get your Bibles, leave me a comment, and thanks so much for watching this video. Bye-bye.